I just want to remind you before we start today's episode that uh, the Angry Therapist Premium is live, uh, ad free, a bonus episode a week, and they're all execution based. So, uh, a series based on a certain topic. Just go to the angrytherapist.com forward slash premium. And if you're willing to forego a cappuccino a month, it's about five bucks, you can get uh, commercial free podcasts and extra episodes. MC McDonald, Dr. Dr. MC McDonald. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Hey, I had a revelation. By What's the way, that? thank you for being on my podcast. Oh, of um, course. Thanks for having me. So I just, I, I literally walked in my door like an hour ago, uh, came home from uh, Idlewild, and um, I was working on the retreat house painting and stuff. And uh, you and I were chatting via text last night um, about frustrations, career stuff. Well, mostly me venting. You should send me an invoice. I will. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the revelation I, I had was because um, I came home and I was like, okay, I'm going to get on my motorcycle. I'm going to go to a coffee shop and write. I'm going to you know, uh, catch up on podcasts. I'm going to do all these things. And I had this moment where I was like, you know, I do this full time, meaning I'm able to do this full time without like having a full practice or without – you know, waiting on tables and, you know, living in LA, the definition of a successful actor is if you can actually get enough work as an actor without having a side gig. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, I know I do a lot of complaining and of course, like everyone else, I want more, but I thought, dude, I do this full time. I like, I have the, the privilege to design my day, um, take, you know, not see clients if I don't want to, and just kind of do this full time. And I, I, I sensed a uh, moment of, um, like it says on my shirt here, pure gratitude. Yay. That's huge. Yeah. So I, uh, just That's wanted a big to share reset. that. Yeah. Cause, um, I know I was complaining last night a lot via text. Not a lot. Okay. A I think it's such an interesting like thing because I think, um, like there's a couple of terms that are just by definition, totally amorphous in the lived experience. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. success, fame, yeah. all of these things, like no one comes in and like knocks on your door and says like, Hey, you can chill. You're successful. Like you've reached this sort of level, uh, you know? So you, it's like this constant comparison game. And like, if you're not feeling good or if something happens that gets in the way of where you thought you were going, all of a sudden you're like, all the things are in question. Am I successful? Will I ever can, be? What does it mean? Can I ask you something? What is yes. your, I don't want to say definition, but what, what is success to you these days? Um, like, that's a great question. What are question. you swimming toward? What are you, what do you want for your life? You know? The thing, this is going to maybe sound like it comes from scarcity mentality and maybe it does, but the thing that I'm looking for at the moment is like sustainability. Like, mm. am I building things that I can put energy into that give energy and enough, you know, financial security yes. back to keep yes. doing them? Because I've been living in an unsustainable way since I was like 21 and it's yeah. that's too long. You yeah, know? I know that's, that. And so under the umbrella of sustainability, mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. not living in, you know, uh, panic, fight or flight, like, like most of us, you know, and, and by yeah. the way, I, I hear we're going through what's called a silent depression. Did you hear this? Oh, no, I did not. Just because, I mean, everything is so expensive. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of layoffs, people are kind of lost. And I mean, people just like can't even like do things. Mm -hmm. And there's a silence about it. Uh, they're also not talking about it. So um, oh wow! So there's yeah, shame around that. it then. And I was like, "Shit, maybe that's that's true." Um, Did so you know? I just found this out last week. Do you like if you had to guess? If you don't know this off the top of your head, what is the amount of money that you have to learn earn in the United States in order to feel steady? And oh, happy? I bet you tie. I bet you because I know. Oh, it's low. It's is low. it low? I was going to say yeah. six figures. No, it's not. Wait, are we talking? We're talking about USA. So Big they did these included. studies to figure out like what is the like the threshold for financial security, where if you earn above that, it doesn't really impact your happiness. Oh, I'm gonna say. Well, I was gonna say. Uh, I was gonna say 100 grand, but uh, I also live in Los Angeles, where um, right. I spend nine dollars on a cup of coffee every day, sometimes <laughs> twice a day. 
Uh, so maybe, I don't know, maybe 70 grand. Yeah, 70 grand. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I nailed it on the top. You nailed it on the first guess. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's like anything beyond that, of course, that adds certain things right. to your life and you can maybe do things that you didn't do before. But in terms of impacting your overall well being and happiness, nothing beyond 70,000 really matters. You know what? This reminds me of that thing they say that um, af anything after, I think Joe Rogan, someone said this, where anything after, I think it's a million or, oh, 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 oh here it is. Okay. Anything after going into a restaurant mm -hmm. and ordering whatever you want without being concerned about mm -hmm. what your entree costs, anything after that, it doesn't, it doesn't really uh, mm -hmm. impact your day to day that much. So, so if you're a billionaire, so from millionaire to billionaire is a, is a it's lot like less, right. Mm -hmm. of, a, of an impact than from, you know, poverty to obviously millionaire. Yeah. It's wild, right? Like we don't have yes. the right frame on that, I think. Well, thank you for that. So 70 grand. Yeah. It's, 70 um, grand. yeah, it's, and again, it's, I think uh, that's got to depend on where you live. Cause like also in the Bay area, 70 grand is actually below, well below the poverty line here. Oh yeah, I mean where you live, I mean mm -hmm. every all the all the houses are like, you know, uh 2 million <laughs> up. I mean, you live yep. in that really expensive area. Yep. Um in a rental that is falling down. Just want <laughs> to and, and ladies and ladies and gentlemen, there's the scarcity <laughs> mindset coming in as we speak in real time. Um hey, question for you cuz you do a lot of mm -hmm. podcasts. How come you don't have a microphone? I do have a microphone, it's just small. Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay, see it. It's a sure. Uh, I want you to. I want you it, to go pro now because you are pro. Um, does it sound crappy? No, I just. I just want to make sure that you, you have everything, all the tools that can amplify your voice and project you out into the world. You know. I need a cooler microphone and a cooler set of headphones. That's the next. Well, the headphones frontier. don't matter, but I'll tell you. And uh, uh, this company's not paying paying me for saying this. Uh, I wish they would, but Sure Mics. <laughs> it's yeah. S H. U R E. Everyone uses them. They're phenomenal. I mean, they are. Yep. I think this mic was like two hundred, but but That's the best microphone one. is that a sure mic. Yeah, it's like a little podcast bundle, um, and it is. It's it was I think one hundred and twenty dollars, but it, it your works. microphone looks like something that came out of a, a on the, in the uh, <laughs> when you're done with it's just cereal and there's like a little prize. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, wait, 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 you're, you're, you're escaping. Okay. So, so success oh. is su yes. success is sustainability, um, mm -hmm. not having, so, uh, you know, speaking of, uh, finances and 70 grand and all that, um, financial security is a real thing and it doesn't mm -hmm. make you superficial because mm -hmm. you want financial security. Yep. And I think, cause I, look, I've been broke. I used to drink coffee out of a styrofoam and I'm saying that mm -hmm. because I just mentioned how my coffee now is poor over $9. And um, my dream back then was like, if I could just shop at Whole Foods, not mm -hmm. once in a while, yeah. but if that's my normal, yeah. right? Because back then it was like Ralph's, Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. But I was like, if I could just shop at Whole Foods every day, I think I would be happy. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the bar. And um, now, you know, Whole Foods is delivered and uh, it, it's, yeah. that's just where we shop. Um, and, and my quality of life is gone up exponential because mm -hmm. um of, of some some financial security you know i don't have like yeah. fuck you money or anything but just you know paying bills yeah. and not worrying about like lots of credit card debt you know mm -hmm. then that, that's the thing like i'm glad you pointed that out because i was just talking to somebody about this yesterday like that's not a superficial thing that doesn't mean no. that all you care about no. is status like i think right. so many of us grew up in in situations where we we saw firsthand that life was incredibly precarious mm -hmm. and so we want to get out of that you know scarcity frantic urgent place and have enough so that we don't have to worry about whether we're going to be able to get groceries next week and mm. that's not about status that's about survival you know so don't I, feel agree. Guilty I wanted to just say that and, because i think a lot of people are scared to say that they want financial totally. security and it's like don't no don't be scared i mean yeah you're not asking for you know no. jay leno's car collection you just want right. to not be in panic right right um, right hey another connecting of dots real quick that has nothing to do with anything because that's just how my mind works this shirt it says gratitude on it was given to me by my previous book agent who oh, cool. sold your book who's oh, your wow. agent sold your book and um your book is called unbroken Yes, unbroken. The trauma response is never wrong. And it yes. is everywhere you can find books. 
Yes, and congratulations on that. Uh, hopefully, Thank there you. will be many more books. Uh, oh, so, Doctor MC recently has been talking a lot about the joy of science. No, the science yes. of joy. Oh my well, god! Both, really? Or both. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I'm, so I'm dyslexic. <laughs> if you guys don't know, um, and that was uh, <laughs> that was happening in real time there. Oh, the joy of science and the science of joy. And the science of uh, joy. And, and what I love about this is <laughs> she don't steal my shit, MC. I work alone. I'm stealing it. I'm stealing um, it. I'll, I'll, I'll credit you. I love this because MC talks about the things in the mundane, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't think there's science behind it, you may not believe it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she's proving that mindfulness, that, um, Focusing on the little things that you have instead of just wanting the big things. Um, me growing up in LA, I'm just wired that way. Always mm -hmm. hit pause on life and waiting for the big shiny thing. Um, and I think that's what made me a miserable fuck, right? And so I love the conversations that she's having today about um, the power of joy, seeking Yay. nectar, as I say, yes. and the science behind joy. So let's talk a little bit about that. Can I read you something really quickly? Yes. Because this is my next book. And so this is, this is just two little paragraphs. But I think I, like- So I can't wait for this book, MC. This okay. is, uh, it shouldn't only be a book. It should be a documentary, The Science of Joy. Well, and, and like a movement and like a, we, need to, yeah. we need to get yeah. this. We need to have little joy flags. Yes. Oh, outside outside our, our houses instead of, you know? Yes. Anyway. Sorry, go ahead. I love this. Okay, so this is just a page, but this is the preface to the, to the new book. This book is about two things, hope and joy, but not mm -hmm. the kind of hope you might be thinking, not the kind of hope that wears white yoga pants and a tiny crop t-shirt that says good vibes only, not mm -hmm. the kind of hope that lives in an Instagram square and reminds you every morning that you attract what you project, and not the kind of hope that sits over the kitchen counter and tells you in the live, laugh, love font that there is a silver lining in every cloud. That's not hope. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Hope is not a light, flowy thing. Hope is gritty, resilient, glinting, relentless. Hope looks like she might be losing in the eighth round. She is wiping blood off her face, dragging herself back to her feet, ears ringing, smirking, and stepping back into the ring for another round. And not the kind of joy you might be thinking. Not the kind of joy that has crocheted pillows on her couch that say, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade and dance like nobody's watching. Not the kind of joy that performs happiness on TikTok, but wouldn't know how to describe real happiness if her little life depended on it. Mm. And not the kind of joy that can't watch sad movies or have deep conversation because tears mess up her mascara. That's not joy. It's fear trying desperately to shape shift so no one notices how dark it is. Mm. Joy is sinewy, fibrous, raw. Joy gets the totality of the present moment and can hold opposing emotions together like nobody else. She has the audacity to interrupt you in the middle of your pity party and shout a rainbow across the floor and say, keep crying if you want, but look. She jabs you with her elbow in the middle of your father's funeral and tells you a joke so inappropriate and hilarious that you have to hide your laughing face with your handkerchief. Hope and joy are fraternal twins, and they are not fucking around. <laughs> they are here to meet you in the deepest, darkest depths when you don't even want them there. They don't just know how to navigate the darkness. The darkness is where they came from. It's where they found their light. Mm -hmm. They are glinting pieces of mica that have gathered every last light wave against the darkness of a cave so they can shoot it right back at you to remind you that the darkness is never, ever total. Joy is here to ground you in the present moment, and hope is here to help you set your eye on the horizon. They have a firm grip in the now and in the future, and without them, you can't access either. Oh, I love Ta -da. that. Thank you. Um, we all need to hear that. That should be everyone's Pledge of Allegiance daily hand over right? their heart uh because i think like when we talk about joy we get it wrong so often when we talk yeah. about these big things and when we're taught you know living in la or living in new york or growing up wherever and you're taught that you won't have happiness until you have this big thing right then you're missing this real joy that's all around you even in the craziest darkest times of your life so we all agree with the concept the what's hard is the execution piece right like you right. listening to this you might be nodding your head yes yes i understand i agree and then after the podcast what do you do wait by the phone right, right? right. <laughs> so right. yeah check let's the talk thing about the execution yeah. joy and uh, and mm -hmm. I, I love that you have them you know it's kind of peanut butter and chocolate right they go hand in hand yeah but, um the, how, how do you execute joy i think you set your sights on it in a more a way more mundane a way you know, so mm -hmm. like 
the one thing that I I had today, um, I bought these um these kitchen towels from William Sonoma that are more expensive than the ones at Target, but I have always loved them because they just mm-hmm. reminded me of like whatever, this just this kind of life that I didn't feel like was accessible to me. And they got delivered this morning and I had them, I took them out of the box and they were piled on my counter. And just walking through the kitchen and yeah. seeing these yellow and white striped towels, I was just like, fuck, that's awesome. Like even just talking about that now, yes. it gives me like a little ripple yeah. of like excitement and joy and just like, and what a dumb small thing, right? I mean, it was this is a total of like $30 in, in kitchen towels. Like what could be more right. mundane than that? But if you set your sights on the things that are around you right now, that are tiny and beautiful, the more you practice that, the it's like you exercise this muscle, which enables you not only to notice it more, but also to feel it more intensely. You know what I mean? Yes. It's almost like putting on new lenses because yes, exactly. we're just so used to seeing what we want to see. And as you were yep. saying this, I just noticed this painting above me. I was and looking at that while I was talking. <laughs> that's crazy. Do you know who that's painted by? No. Logan. Oh, damn. She's and, good. <laughs> yeah. My three and a half year old. And so we, we, we put it up there. And as you were thinking about you, and um, so Logan and Vanessa are away right now. And I haven't seen them in a, in a, in a week. Aww. And I looked up and I, you know, of course, connecting that and daughter and, and uh, me wrestling with her and all that. Um, as you were talking about the, uh, the kitchen towels. I think, I mean, look, I struggle with it daily, right? I wake yeah. up checking emails waiting for the Same. big deal and, and this is what my text was about yesterday waiting by the phone getting led on all mm-hmm. the kind of stuff and um it's kind of like uh swimming up river to be like okay yeah i am going to drop into my body and feel this conversation or um you know the sweat from this workout or the sensation the wind on my face when i'm riding my motorcycle um and then you know uh high high uh, good water pressure floss mm-hmm. yes watering yeah. watering my lawn which you know most people haven't done since the 80s yeah uh yeah finding joy in and and if you can make that a priority and this is what people don't do because it's like you know that that's on the side it's extra right. if, if if that could be one of the the mm-hmm. food groups the, the you yeah. know and that laminated poster and totally. you thread that into your life yeah. And this is what I want you to talk about. How does that then change the neurology instead of it okay. being just a mindset? It actually, uh, there's science behind it kind of changing you. Yeah. And here's the thing, like, I want to say, because I think I can come off as very smile, like, oh, she's just a smiley, easy yeah, like, yeah, person yeah, who yeah. like is pays attention to joy all the time. Right. That is not what is happening inwardly. I'm exactly like you I wake up in the morning before I even like have both eyes open. I'm checking email, yep. looking at metrics, trying to figure out like, is the book doing okay? Will I ever get another book? You know, like all can, this. Can I just insert real quick? Um, if yeah. you don't know, Dr. MC McDonald, she also has an incredible story. I mean, she lost uh, both parents at a young age, mm. uh, lots of um trauma and lots of you know like everyone else lots of struggles long tunnels darkness all of that stuff so she's not like For sure. you're not like some privileged person um because when you say doctor i don't know i think i think people can judge you very fast 100%. right yeah. yeah yeah oh totally yeah and i def- definitely had privilege but i i have i have had a, my fair share for sure yeah. of trauma and struggle and it's it is a daily battle trying to make sure that I keep in tune with joy. And the reason that I learned this lesson is because it came to me in my darkest moments. Like, mm. and another kind of silly example, and I'll get to the brain science in a second, is like when you have, when you struggle with um, something like chronic pain, like a migraine or something like that, the day after or right when the headache starts to lift, all of a sudden you have access to this like relief and appreciation for the moment and your body and movement and regular stuff Mm -hmm. that gives you this automatic reset. And I think I've had that so many times that it just was like, okay, this is the lesson the universe is trying to tell you, pay attention and get this message out. But I was also really fucking skeptical. Like I've learned about positive psychology in school. I was like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, this feels like it yeah, hokey cheerleader. Came out in the 90s. Right. Totally. Right. When the world was very positive and like of course it's important to talk about those things, but does it really help someone who's actually struggling? And then the brain science came in. And what the brain science shows is that essentially to kind of simplify this radically, you have um your brain operates like a circuit board. 
So there's a mm -hmm. limited amount of energy and certain circuits can't be on at the same time. Otherwise, they will shut down the whole system. And two of the, the circuits that are counterposed are the fear circuit and what has been called by Martin Seligman, the hope circuit. Yes. Which is um, this part of the brain that you are tapping into whenever you are noticing and imprinting joy, um, doing something kind for someone else, expressing gratitude, um, imagining your future, um, doing art, like all of these things. Whenever you're doing those things, you by definition, by necessity, shut down the fear circuit. So if you're someone who deals with like chronic stress or anxiety, trauma, panic, your fear center is on all the time and your hope circuit is never on. Right. And so it gets disconnected over time and then it becomes a lot harder to tap into what's available in that brain space. So the more you practice, you know, imprinting tiny little joys or writing texts of gratitude to people or just these little things you can kind of easily weave into your daily life the more every time you do that, you're turning on the hope circuit, but you're also strengthening your ability to access that circuit. And so over time, you can really radically rewire your brain away from unnecessary fear, panic, trauma, anxiety, and toward real, true, sustainable hope and joy. Someone's thinking this, I know it. How long does it take? So if I yeah. was to practice joy daily, because the mm -hmm. running water is usually fear, not hope and joy. Yep, if it was totally. the other way around, that'd be amazing, but it's not. Um, right. At what point will my brain start to change? At what point will I feel better if I'm daily, um, you know, practicing joy and, and feeling hope? So there's not, to my knowledge, studies about that yet. I can tell you from my own experience and then also in my experience with clients and small groups that it's not over with, the weekend. That's for sure. <laughs> it's not over the weekend, but within five days, you can go from not being able to see any future to noticing little glimmers of real positive, like, oh, wait, you know, mm -hmm. and that is a huge, that's a huge payback in five days. Of just noticing wow. tiny little joys and being Wait, able so, to. So five days of noticing mm -hmm. tiny little joys, like like mm -hmm. your uh, your sink towels and and mm -hmm. um, you know sunsets and all that does yep. what? That I think gets you to a place where you start to be able to see hope in your actual life. Oh, and, got it. And starts to rewire. So that's pretty profound because I've like I have done this in in some of the, you know those moments where you're so deep dark in it that like someone's like what does your future look like and you're like mm -hmm. dude all I see is a, is a black yeah, yeah like a an abyss like I see the nothing. apocalypse right yeah going from that to being like I don't know I would really like to do X Y or Z or what I see in my future are these three things and I'm really like thinking about ways I can make that happen that's a huge huge turnaround in five days. Five days is nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, it's actually a lot shorter than I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say like, you know, uh, I forgot what the uh, it takes to make something a habit. I think it was like ninety days or you sixty know days. That, that all of that is like bullshit. I like is looked it? into this. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally uh, made up. It, like, I'm like everyone else, just mm -hmm. believing everything I see on the internet. I did too, totally. Yeah. Like that's yeah. like because people say it so, and then they're like, no, it's not. It's not five days. It's twenty one days, and you're like, oh well, that's so random. Most people are just copying true. pasting information these days. <laughs> totally. So it's like you know, it's uh, and I don't blame them. Shit, it's like yeah, you see something and you believe it, and totally. it sounds. You know, the person sounds like he's certain or she's certain. And then so you just pass it along. Yep. Um, so that's bullshit. But five days of practicing joy um, will activate hope, will inject yeah. some hope in yeah. your life. Yeah. And then the more it's kind of like a, like a, a snowball, you know, effect where it's like right. kind of the snowball coming down the hill. Because once you start noticing joy, then it starts to become automatic. Then you notice mm -hmm. it more often. And then instead of like working to find one thing a day all of a sudden you're noticing one thing an hour and like that just, mm. it, cha it changes your life. Cause you're, you're regulating your blood flow and electrical activity in your brain. Like it's yeah. not just that you're, you're doing this exercise in like, let's think about the happy things. It's like, no, let's well, let, turn off this part and turn this part on. Let, let me ask you something. Um, give us a day in your life. So you wake up at what time? Oh, I wanna, seven. I want to like use you as an example. You're like, yeah. as an example where you try to, um, inject some joy and hope. Um, so yep, yep. you wake up at what time? Noon? Seven usually. <laughs> Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. And uh, what do you do? What are the, some of the things you do, and what are what are some of your mindsets that you're going throughout the day? 
So I, I will say that I, this is, again, this is something I'm working on. So this is not, I'm not trying to say that I'm like the, the epitome of. No, you know, of course. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and there's days, the, that, there's days you probably get up and say, fuck life. I don't want to do 100%. any of this. <laughs> yeah. 100%. You know? Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, wake up at seven in the morning and then look at my emails immediately, which you're not supposed to mm -hmm. do. And I scroll I this, through. You know what? And, I do the yeah. same shit. I know people say, <laughs> stay, you know, go ice plunge, go do whatever. Don't yeah. uh, off. No, I want to look It's in the, in the weird way. It kind of calms me. It's well, yeah, because otherwise you're like, what kind of urgent thing is sitting right. there? Right. Right. Just give me the info now. Me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Punch I want to know what now. my day. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Right. Um, and then I try to put that down and not connect. This is new for me. I've been trying this last couple of months, not try to get in the chain of like answering all the text messages, going on the Instagram messaging right. board and right. like doing right. all these things. So I leave, try to leave my phone on the couch. Then I make coffee. Um, and then I sit down and I have a, a journaling practice that I do every morning mm. um, where I try to either use a prompt or um, think about gratitude. Or if I need to process something that happened the previous day, I try to do that. In How a really small, like 20 minutes, not, and you not write a long like no one's going to read it kind of thing. Yep. Totally. I don't even read it. So it's more like of like a, it's more of a, a venting. It's abstract. It's um, yeah. a venting. splattering paint. Or I will try like uh, the other day I woke up with a migraine and I, um, I made myself write a list of all the things that were, that were going well anyway. So that I didn't tank the the next twenty four hours, and so I was mm. like, okay, this medication is working. This coffee is delicious. I don't have a schedule so packed today that I'm totally mm. screwed. I'm able to do these sessions. Okay, maybe I can here and then set a couple goals. What I would love to be able to do today is walk to the grocery store and move my body a little bit, and if mm -hmm. I can do those things, so kind mm -hmm. of re revamp the um, to do list. And can then I just, I'm kind uh, of off. insert something real quick. Sure. Uh, if you have nothing to be grateful about be grateful that you don't have migraines seriously I was, I was married to someone with migraines chronic yeah and holy imagine you just out of nowhere right mm -hmm. have to lay down for hours or you don't know what you can do or not do yeah. um uh she was an actress i mean she she, she couldn't oh, do scenes she i mean she she would have to instantly lay down because they were so bad and then she never knew when they were going to come. And that's yep. what's scary. It's exactly yeah. what's scary. And it's like, it's sort of like being taken out by a sniper. Like once it comes yeah. on, you're, you're done. Yeah. But then the sniper, it's not just a shot. It power, totally powerless, totally oh, helpless. It, yeah. and, and then blinding pain. Like, yes, that's the other, right. Pain. Right. And, and, you Which know, is, um, so I had insomnia for two years where oh, I, I shit, literally yeah. didn't sleep, where I would watch the sun come up. And then of course I would get more afraid and then, and then that would give me more insomnia. And I remember, uh, in that two years, I actually thought, oh, I could see how people get to a place where they wouldn't want to live anymore. And, uh, I didn't have children, yeah. it was, you know, and I, I, and I think migraines can be like that where it's like the yep. pain is so bad. And so yep. consistent that you're like, mm -hmm. I don't like, I'm not actually, I'm not able to feel any joy. This is no life. Like this is not, this life. is no life. Yeah, yes. Totally. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, so I just little, wanted to say that because, because migraines are no joke. They are no joke. Um, yeah. and the, a little plug, there's a book called one, two, three, heal your headache by David Buckholz that absolutely mm. changed my life. So I used mm -hmm. to get like 15 a month and now I get like a handful a year. So that's amazing. Oh, so great. Check that out great. if you're struggling. Yeah. yeah. So you um, journal and then after, after journal, journal. and coffee, then I'm off to the races. Uh, yep. Coffee, mm. breakfast, whatever. And then I am doing sessions, podcasts, recording, like yes, whatever. You usually, are, like, back uh, to back to back. you are, uh, 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 what is it called? I almost said you're a working horse, but that's not the term. You're a work workhorse. Horse. I'm a workhorse. There, is there a, there's I'm... a difference between a workhorse and a working horse. <laughs> <laughs> Me calling you a working horse, I don't think is nice, but you are a workhorse in that. I'm a workhorse, um, yep. Yeah, you have a, a packed a schedule, schedule always. You take on <laughs> yep. more than, than you should. You don't yes. give yourself breaks. And I'm sure all of this yep. is changing and you know, you're, you're, you're better at it. It's but uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, so now you're doing sessions, right? Yep, so I'm doing when, sessions. When, um... when do you eat breakfast and then... So I eat breakfast, you know, right away. So usually by like eight and then okay. I'm in sessions, you mm -hmm. know, nine to 12, I take a little break. Then I'm doing stuff from one to usually three or four. Um, and then it's like, do you have to go to the grocery store? Do you have to do, you know, all these little right. things, but laundry, um, laundry. Yeah. All the like regular mundane domestic things. So, so um, in that schedule, where do you have time to find joy? 
Um, all, all the time. But also, I want to also just say that the other thing I try to do every single day is move for a significant yes. amount of time if I can. Big believer because, in that. I'm a big believer yeah. in that. Yes. A for, non-negotiable. And truly a non-negotiable. Yes. Yeah. Because as soon as I stop, I had a couple of days recently where like I couldn't for a couple of reasons. And I like immediately my brain was like in a bad place, like <laughs> mm. immediately. So mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, wow. Okay. This really does have an important effect. Um, so what does movement look like for you? Um, a bunch of different things. I just started mountain biking this year. Um, so oh, that's really shit. fun and adventurous nice. and wild. I know it's, yeah. it's like terrifying and cool. Um, I do a lot of yoga uh, too, right? I do a lot of yoga. Yep. Um, I do, um, circuit training. I got a trainer at the end of last year and work out with him once a week because I wanted to really actually prevent injury. My muscles were very like imbalanced because of the things I was doing. And so a physical therapist was like, you should get a trainer and just like balance everything out. So I do that. I hike, I swim, there's a pool close by. Um, and I, I do lap swimming. Um, I didn't know all this about you. Dancing. I just thought, I know, because I, <laughs> I just see you walking around with the yoga mat. And I was like, oh, she's doing yoga. Right. I didn't know yep. that you were uh, dominating mountains and swimming and uh, mountains. and yeah. circuit yeah. training, which is kind of yeah. like the, yep. the fitness that I do, where you're really exercising your heart. So yes, totally. Yeah, I'm trying to get all the all the zones, all the heart rate zones. That's going. awesome because it's so it. important for longevity and and mental health, and and also just as I get older, I want to be stronger, not the other way yeah. around. No. And then how do you wind, wind, wind down after that long, long uh, day and schedule? Um, I've been trying to disconnect. I'm s- catastrophically bad at this by like 8 p.m. That's late. It's late, but it used to be like 1130, you know. MC, if you do not have a child. I do not have a child. If you have a child, I mean, you, you, it, would, it would throw a wrench that, into yeah. everything we're talking about. Yeah, to, to, yeah whole, you can't. Yeah. Oh, you were saying yeah. do not have a child. Yes. Do yeah, not no. have a child. Do not. Not, not in the plans. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but I'm, I not, to, I'm, like, not, I'm not like anti-parenting or children. No, totally. I'm just saying that uh, if your day ends at eight, um, it will yeah. end much sooner, uh, not by choice. On top of that, yes. it, yeah, you're not going to be uh, mountain biking and going swimming and stuff. No, a thousand percent. No, no. Um, and I feel really lucky for being able to do that because even though I am you know, overworked, I also do have so much more balance than I used to because it used yeah. to just be work all the time. Yeah, and now yeah. it's like, no, okay. Um, I feel like I feel like before, and we talked about this briefly. I feel mm-hmm. like before you found comfort in work, it's like if you didn't work, yeah, yeah, there was anxiety. You know, and there's a lot of people like 100%. this. Um, yeah, I have an obsessive com- uh, compulsive personality as well, mm-hmm. and I used to find comfort as a kid locking myself in a room like 12 hours, forgetting to eat, just building shit yep. with Legos, you know? And so, um, You're I think work was that. that for you. What's that? <laughs> You're still doing that. I'm, no. Yeah. There's a lot of that residue. Um, yeah. And for no, you, I think you're, for that. what, what did we had a revelation where you were like, Oh, uh, didn't I say something that changed my life? Yeah. Cause I didn't think I say like, something you, like, uh, Oh, go, sorry. Go ahead. No, you do it. Uh, you, I forgot what I said, but it was something like your, your, um, your new normal or, uh, um, fuck, what did I say? I'm sorry. I talked so much. I don't so, even know what I said. No, it was, I, I remember exactly where we were when we had this conversation. And I think I always will, cause this was so life-changing, but I was talking about how I, I couldn't find the reset button. Like usually mm. overworking didn't affect me. And I was like, I don't know if I'm just getting older, but like, I can't, I'm like burnt and I can't like right. figure it out. Like, what oh, I fuck? know where we were. I know where we were. We were in a, <laughs> uh, a little, little roadster convertible parked on the side <laughs> of the road, um, eating like we were in a, a 90s, uh, John Hughes film. That's where we were. hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Which by the um, way, joy, that was a lot of joy. That was so much joy. Totally. That was so it's like high school joy. I loved it. But I was like, I can't fucking find the reset button. I don't know what's happening. And you were just like super casually. You're like, I feel like maybe like you needed work before because it was the thing that regulated you and kept you calm and safe. And now like your life is different. Yes. And you don't, you don't need, need it, it anymore. anymore. Right. Right. And so now your relationship to it has to change. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Was it totally right? But then your life is set up in this way that you have over where you have all these responsibilities and all these things yeah. you said yes to and all these things you need to do. And it's just like, oh, shit. By the but way, yeah, MC that's... is a professor. She's an author. She has a full practice. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, she has a social life. She has, I mean, yeah. so, I mean, she's, she's pretty booked. Um, but it's we're working on, um, working, working on, on uh, streamlining more. Yes, which is which it's going to take a long time, but I think it's it's there are signs. There are signs of life. It's happening. It's just uh, that. But the thing that's really humbling is how 
as soon as I try to make changes, I come up against my nervous system. I don't know if you experience this too, yeah. but it's just like, I'm like, okay, cognitively, I know I need to sleep better. And to do that, I need to stop working by eight and blah, 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 all this stuff. But then actually doing it and sitting in sure. my house for those yeah. hours between eight and whatever time I go to bed, whoo, that's hard. What happens when you say, so do you feel, you just feel panic and anxiety? I feel panic. I think of all the lists, all the things I can do, be doing. Right, There's right. shame. I'm like, I, I know that I didn't answer this person's email yeah, and it's going to yeah, come yeah. tomorrow and I'm such a shitty person because I should have gotten back to them. Not that it's urgent, but you know what I mean? Like I just, um, whatever's left on the to-do list, which there's always things left on the to-do list, I feel bad about not accomplishing. So it's hard yeah, to Yeah, it's an internal, internalization, um, mm -hmm. but also um, – I just, I just realized that uh, we're on camera. I was just, I just scratched my nuts real quick <laughs> thinking oh, we're on a podcast. You can't and I was see like, that low. Okay, good. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's the, the dangers in internalization and, yeah. and also um, this is where self-regulation comes in. Yep. This is where there's a chance to rewire. This is where you can self-soothe, totally. talk yourself yep. off the ledge. And this is where yep. you can, can shift, you know, take a different and route. Totally. Yep. And so I have like a whole toolbox of things that I do when I'm feeling that way, but I'm just, it's humbling. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's not getting easier quickly. And so this is, but I've been living my whole life like this. Like, of course it's not going to get easy quickly. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. to keep practicing and I have to keep, you have to keep doing the action for it to become comfortable and then for it to become second nature. It takes a long time. Yeah. And you know where the motivation kicks in um, is when you have this aha moment where how you would have felt or what you would have done didn't happen mm -hmm. this time or mm -hmm. like you didn't panic or there's less of that or yes. you didn't internalize like something is different in this moment yep. and, and you're you like oh shit it's something's okay. working yeah totally yeah like yeah. not only is something different but then it's not the case that everything fell apart which is what i was afraid yeah. was gonna happen yeah like yeah i didn't finish my to-do list and then nobody like came and ended my career for it you know what i mean <laughs> like, yes I, I always talk about um realizing so for me the bumper sticker or the mantra is realizing the sky didn't fall so whether mm -hmm. you're in a toxic relationship and then you find a healthy yeah. relationship and you get into a fight and you realize the person didn't leave or you yeah. realize you know the person didn't hit yeah. you or, or you totally. realize the person, or, or um you know you didn't get the deal and you realize you didn't mm -hmm. fall into depression or you, so like yep. this, this realization that, or you quit your job, you take the leap and you realize you're going to be okay. Like yep. the sky didn't fall. And it's in that moment where you're like, okay, I'm safe. I can do this. Yep. I can build. There's hope in there. You know, how do you, how do you imprint that personally? So like when that happens for you and you notice that there's been a change, then what do you do to like solidify I, that? So I think it happens all the time. We just don't see it. I think we have right. to catch, you know, we have to like stop and be like, Oh wait, this is the moment that I actually expressed how I felt and my friend, we're still friends or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Or I didn't right, get fired right, right. or whatever. Yeah. And to sit with that for, for a moment be like, Oh shit. Dropping into your body and be like, the sky didn't fall. The mm -hmm. sky didn't fall. It's okay. Yeah. And it's then you're okay, like, Oh yeah. fuck. Then you're like, Oh, what else can I do? <laughs> you know, how far can we're I push all... this? Maybe I should right. go to work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should blow everything up. Yeah. Okay, Not only wait, am I going to express my feelings, but now that I'm going to tell you how I want to be touched. <laughs> Let me give you instructions. <laughs> oh my and God. Why, I'm so predictable. Like, what happened to you? <laughs> um, hey, you I, I want to, um, first I want to thank you for your honesty. Every time we have a conversation, oh, sure. um, you and I talk like no one's listening, which is always the best, right? So it's like, you know, they say yeah. dance, like no one's watching um, the yeah. best, at least for me when I'm listening to, to, to conversations. Um, I don't like tap dancing. I just want to hear a real yeah, conversation. No. And so Go right to the um, heart of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I have three questions for you and you have three questions for me. And this is how we're going to end can it. I say one thing real quick? Yes, you may. Um, cause I want to give you a little, uh, cause you said how, where do you find joy in all that overwork? And I want to tell you that it's possible to find the joy in the overwork. So I can just tell you oh, like a handful right. of little things yes. from even just one day. So Please. I wake up in the morning, I come out into the living room. The first thing I notice is the light. The mm. light in the living room changes all year round and I have little um, prisms everywhere. So there's rainbows places mm -hmm. and that's always like a little blast. The coffee, the way the first sip of coffee tastes, 
in the morning when I sit down and I journal like that comfort of being on the couch with a cup of coffee is mm. always a blast of joy. Mm. Having a breakthrough moment with a client or having a moment where someone's able to tell me something or we're able to discover something that is that didn't that we didn't know before is huge. The feeling of being hungry for lunch and then being able to eat the thing that you want and then feel that hunger being satiated. The Ooh. sweat when you're moving around, the, the mm. song that comes on in the in the workout when you're like ready to give up and you're just like, mm -hmm. oh, yes. That like the feeling of of taking a shower at the end of the day and then putting your PJs on and like getting in bed and like all of these things. That's like, I don't know how many things I just listed, but those are things that are super easy to miss. Yes. But if you imprint them and feel into that little blast of joy, where does that go in your body? How does that feel? Yes. How many seconds does it last is, is super transformative. Pass okay. the baton. Yeah. Pass the baton to me. Here is the baton. Go. Watching a sunset with a gas tank in between your legs, watering mm -hmm. your lawn, noticing that it's growing because of that water, wrestling with your three-year-old daughter, <laughs> liking something you wrote. Oh, fuck, yeah. The five seconds after a really hard workout, the 10 minutes after an ice plunge, that's become kind of my new addiction. Mm. A meaningful conversation with a friend. Mm. Groceries delivered. The best. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, um, really good coffee. You know what I love yes. about pour over coffee is it, they fucking make you wait. And there's something in the – like it could taste the same. I don't even know that if the taste is different. But when I go get yep. pour over, it takes like 20 minutes. And I'm just sitting there like drip, drip, drip. But oh, there's shit, something about really? watching the process and you know it's hand poured. And then when you get it, because you waited for it and you saw how it was made, mm -hmm. um, when you take your first sip, there's so much more appreciation than just mm -hmm. you know getting a drip where they just pour it in. Here you go. Yeah. The it slows things down. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the like the ache of the weight is a is a joy in itself where you're like, oh, this sucks. I want it right now. Yes, with the with the right yeah. mindset. Underwear yeah. that fit perfectly. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and even if you're not like, you know, in the best shape of your life, you still feel Doesn't good matter. in the in these underwear. A thousand percent. MC a good hair day. A good hair day. A good hair Very day. Very rare for me. <laughs> is that a new perm Find, you're sporting? Finding glasses that yes. make you feel attractive. Like really cool, yes. unique glasses. Yep. I could go on for days. See? Well, because I used to be miserable, and I've learned in the last 20 years, um, if you're waiting yep. to win the lottery, good luck. Find yep. life in your life. This is my mantra is find life in your life. Find life that. in your life, in what you already have. And listen, yep. as I'm saying these things, I'm going to be honest, I struggle with this shit daily. Right. Yeah. I, I am wearing underwear that fit perfectly, but I'm still waiting by the phone for my agent to call. Right. Like it's, it's not right. like, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard. And, um, yeah, but what a great reminder. And, um, I remember when I had nothing, it was like, I used to listen to Wayne Dyer and just take a walk. Mm. I didn't have many friends. I would just walk around K town aimlessly listening to Wayne Dyer. Uh, and I also remember, Damn. um, Ryan Reynolds once said, when he was a struggling actor in Hollywood, what saved his life was his motorcycle. Uh, when he was depressed, mm. he would just get on his, um, I think he had a try, but he just get on his bike and just kind of roam. And when I got my first motorcycle, I was like, oh, this is what he was talking about. I used to just ride the streets of K town aimlessly. And just, um, just to move, just to move, just to see lights, just mm -hmm. to feel wind on my face, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. There were also times when I was working a nonprofit, I called in sick and I would just drive to the beach. A lot of people in LA come here for the beach, but they never go. I used to drive to the yep. beach <laughs> and I would just put on nineties music and just fucking run, just run. I, oh, I, I love, what I was doing. I, I just, that. I just ran. I just ran yeah. until I didn't want to. And when I was running, I noticed things, you know, notice the kids playing, notice the water. And yeah. it just got me out of my head. And I, a lot of those things kind of bec became the, 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 the rungs of a ladder for me where it gave me some structure yeah, yeah, yeah. and injected hope, as you say. Yep. There's another tiny little neuroscience thing there, which is that when you're running or walking, um, I forget the name of your, your eyes are essentially doing what happens in EMDR, which by mm -hmm. default turns down your fear center. Oh. So that's another way to access hope and, and to turn down the fear, panic, whatever is to be moving. And it yeah. doesn't have to be running. It, it happens when you're running. It also happens when you're walking. 
Okay, MC, I questions. loved this conversation. I have um, about 10 minutes before okay. someone's going to be over here. Um, I ha I'm having little ice parties now. So um, Ooh, I, love I, don't, this. I don't know if you've done ice plunges. Yet. No. Oh, dude. So you have to come with me because we do them in okay. Idlewild. Yeah. You and I are going to do a retreat one day. It's going to be. Yes. It's going to be, it's going to hang on joy, what we're talking about, because up in yes. the woods, there's so much to, as far as mindfulness, oh, and uh, yeah. maybe it'll be some kind of, uh, maybe we call it unbroken. It's going to hang on trauma, joy, all of this. Shit. I love and then it. You, and then you will do your first ice plunge. I will do the I will try it. Ice plunge, mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to record it and everything. <laughs> and like, hey, where'd MC go? She fucking Ubered home. <laughs> what? But it's her she, retreat. She, oh, she bounced. Out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I told MC, can you bring me three questions? I'm going to bring you three. I don't know if we have time for three. Um, okay. So I go, you go. Okay. So I will start. These aren't going to embarrass you, I promise. I was thinking about okay. like, should I embarrass her? But I was like, eh, that's so predictable, I totally John. I fully expected. <laughs> yeah. Grow up, dude. You're 50. I'm stealing the first one from uh, Tim Ferriss. He a okay. asks his guests this at the end of every podcast episode. Uh, if you had a billboard, what would be on it? What's the mantra? Actually, I'm going to do a little John Kim twist. Mm -hmm. Today, what would be on that billboard for the world to see? And then mm -hmm. the second part of this question is, what would have it been 20 years ago? Because they probably would have been two different things. Oh, damn. I think today, the 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 phrase would be, Oh man, there's so many things I want to say. One phrase today. Could you forgive yourself for what you reached for in desperation? Mm, wow, a question. Maybe just forgive yourself. Maybe a statement. Forgive oh, a statement. yourself for what you reached for in desperation. Oh, that's so powerful. Right? Hey, let, let's give it a second. Let that sink in. Forgive what you reached for. Forgive yourself for what you reached for in desperation. So as you say that, I'm like, okay, all of my 30s, every single yeah. day, I would have to forgive myself because everything yeah. was out of desperation, yeah. whether it was, you know, love or career-based or whatever. Great. Okay. What would be on that billboard 20 years ago? You 20 years ago would have, it would have said what? I, you know, the first thing that comes to mind 20 years ago is when? How old was I? Oh, shit. I don't know. Okay. So I just said 20 years because that's long. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that was the, um, not the 2.0 version of you. That was more of your beta, No, that right? was the, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would I said have said, years. like, um, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, am I okay? Mm, right. Like, right. I don't know that I was even in a place, yeah, to say anything. Right. So it's not I am okay, it's am I okay. Am I okay, yeah. Yeah, I love, I love, here's what's cool about these questions. I love the gap. I love that there, it's a mm. character arc, right? Oh, my God. So yeah. my question, my, what would be on the billboard 20 years ago would be yeah. fuck this life for me. Fuck and then, life. and then today would be every part of your story will be used. Oh, I love that. Every part yeah. of your story will be used. Yes. Even the dark, especially the dark, you know, they, all, you, they will all be used. If you hadn't taught me that, that was like one of our first conversations we had when my life didn't make any fucking sense at all. And mm. I was like, what am I doing? And you were like, it's all going to come together. It just doesn't like look like it right now. I don't know if I believe that, but it was uh, uh, maybe a clever thing to say. I do believe, I do believe in our early years, uh, especially when you don't know, you feel like your life's falling apart. Um, mm -hmm. It's like the puzzle is dropped on the table, the yeah. jigsaw puzzle, and the pieces are everywhere, you know. And and then over yeah. the years, we start piecing things together, and we yeah. see an image, and we yeah. That's such a good image because it's like then you put the border together, and then you do yeah, the, or, yeah, then you yeah. can get right above yeah. your head, like the okay. Mm -hmm. Question for me. Okay. Um, I'm going with a, an old standard, which is what is your greatest fear? And don't give us the bullshit answer. Success. Oh shit. So, um, not like the, so I feel like I have some sustainability. So I, I sure. definitely, you know, I mean, we're just, just to bring this full circle, me yeah. being able to do this without having, um, to wait tables to me is success. Right. So mm -hmm. the content being content, all that stuff. So I, I, I'm very grateful. And I do think I'm somewhat successful. I'm talking big success, like yeah, uh, being yeah. famous or having millions of dollars. Yeah. That terrifies me because uh, my dad was an alcoholic. My mom's dad was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I have addiction. If you believe that addiction is a gene, I definitely have it. Um, I'm I'm wearing it. They're tight, <laughs> and uh, um, I'm scared of that. I'm I'm. I mean, you know me. I'm I'm a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what's been grounding me is Logan and a child mm -hmm. and Vanessa yeah. and all that. But uh, I'm reckless. I'm impulsive. Um, I have addictions, so food, sex, uh, creation, anything creating, like I said, Legos, 
I could uh, disappear and just, you know, too much, right? So you turn into um, Elon Musk and be an absolute mania. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had, I don't know, uh, you know, fifty million dollars, I don't mm-hmm. fuck. I I don't know if I trust myself. You know, it's like, That's hey, did you guys hear thing. about that guy John? He went to Vegas. He's never he, seen again. Yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened to him. He was doing these videos for yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, hopefully I have more, I'm 50 now, so I've got more, you know, Grounded. self-control, but yeah, that would well, be. The, and there's, you have so many reasons to trust yourself. Like, yes, you have these tendencies. What and... responsibilities now, you right. know, I have a kid, I've got, you know, people yep. that expect things Depend on me. you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Next question. Yep. Um, oh shit. I have so many notes on my phone. I pulled up the wrong, wait, oh, it was an email. Okay. Um. How do you react when someone hurts you? Uh, shut down. Mm. So I punch back. Oh, you do? Or get very wow. logical. Yeah, express. Okay. I do the opposite of you. I don't shut down. I, yeah. you know, get defensive. and I, yeah. uh, Okay, ask me. Are one. you Hurry like up. conscious in the moment when that happens? Or are you like saying things you're not even like tracking? You're just like kind of in another headspace. I, I think I appear calm, but I turn into a lawyer. Yeah. And I get very... Yeah. Um, um, I could have a sharp tongue, yeah. if that makes sense. Are you like fully you in the room? Like, are you making choices about what you're saying, or is it just like a stream? No, I think. Well, I mean, I'm I'm a lot more better now at um, mm-hmm. waiting that you know uh, the putting the emotional speed bump and you know be careful what you say. What you re- responding instead of reacting. But before, I used to be highly reactive. So if you hurt me, I'm going to say some shit back and you know that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and most of the 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 relationships I've been in were. Um, with women who would shut down, which yeah, then allowed, which then allowed me to yeah. steamroll, which is not good. I yeah. um and and and, uh, and even to a certain extent, I think Vanessa has a history of shutting down. But um, because of that, it encouraged me. Because if the person didn't shut down and they bit back, then it would be a tug of war. But yeah. because the person I chose to be with usually shut shut down, it made me, you know wave my flag or steamroll or you know yeah yeah yeah. it's funny how those those matches happen when you're with the person who because i would often be with the person who who was like that right i should steamroll the person but yeah 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 it is interesting that's usually it's like how we find each other right Mm -hmm. okay uh final question for you is what do you love the most about this life? What an appropriate question. I had no idea what we were going to talk oh, about, damn. and this just fits right in. What do you love the most about this life? The first thing that comes to mind, I feel like I'm going to I'm going to think of a thousand things later, is just like the richness of experiences that are available to us. Mm. Like good and bad, like we go through some wild shit yeah. here. Yeah. And none of us know what the fuck any of it means, but like it's intense and there's something about that intensity that um that i love you know i i i agree i agree i love that um i think for me it's that we have the ability daily to shake our life edge of sketch meaning yeah. tomorrow's a brand new day you know yeah. it yeah. doesn't mean the, yeah. the pain's gone and you 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 know you it doesn't mean that you're healed or whatever but just just t- the sun's coming up again tomorrow you know, right. start it, start again. Yeah. yeah. And you can do that at any point. I think people like we feel stuck so often when we're not. Yeah. Where can we find you? I'm on TikTok and Instagram at the same handle. It's just mc.phd. And my website is alchemycoaching.life. Wait, your handle is mc.phd? Yeah. That's so awesome. I had no <laughs> idea. No, I mean, I, I see the MC when you come up on my feed, right. but I didn't know it was that simple. It's Did MC. you? Is that new? Yes, I changed it like at the beginning of this year because someone in PR you had McDonald's like, on there. You had you had a long handle. I think it was like I spelled it like M C, but it was E M S I E, and people were like, "No oh. one is going to recognize." And it was like a picture of Elmo was my. <laughs> oh my God. She's come a long way. Hey, M C dot PhD is such a yep. easy to remember remember address. Right? So that's great. Yep. I'm I'm so proud of you and how far you've Thank come. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's do a retreat together. Yep. Uh, and also, I got to say, and I'm saying this um, while we're still on, on air, I, I would love to have you like on, on my pod as just all the time. Like, uh, oh, there's only a few people that I do that with, uh, that, like Buddy Wakefield. Yep. God, oh, when I'm Buddy. in the room with him, it's just, I just forget anyone's even listening. We have Jesus a great time. Christ. 
He's uh, a goddamn you, prophet. Right. And we have history together. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a handful of people that I'm like, let's just always hang out. <laughs> but, no, so, let's just do it. Cause I think, yeah. yes, I'm totally in. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's we do always these, discover uh, stuff when we talk, you know, or I always do. Yeah. And it's just great. It doesn't feel like work. You know, if it felt nope. like work, I would. Yeah. So, um, weekly, bi-weekly, I don't know, but you're going to be, um, you're going to, I'm not going to say sidekick. You're going to be my partner on, on, oh, sidekick, uh, on many of these episodes. I'm happy to be in the sidekick. No, no. No, little, no, can I get a little a car on the side of a sidecar on your motorcycle? Oh, shit. Goggles, goggles, <laughs> and a um, both seeking nectar. Yes. Uh, God, that would be a great photo. Anyway, let's do it. All right, that's how we're gonna roll up to Idaho Wild when we do the retreat. Is you're gonna be on a sidecar <laughs> with goggles and fucking scarf, and I'm gonna be okay. riding. We're gonna be like uh, the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Let's uh, find, find some joy. All right, MC. Yep. Have a uh, thank you for the amazing uh, reminder. And thank uh, if you you're so listening, much. This is so yeah. Fun. If you're listening, um, practice, practice daily, threading joy into your life. There's science behind it. Change your brain. Thank you for listening. Yes. Be well.